Hello Indie Game fans, while yet another smaller week of indie game new releases, we do have a whole bunch of great ones that will drop on Thursday, with a surprise release or two that will definitely be of interest in this edition of indie gaming this week. Let's begin with Orbital Bullet, the 360 degree roguelite, one which is pretty self-explanatory, where circling around a level instead of going from left to right does look pretty interesting. Cool pixel art look as well, which is mixed nicely with the 3D environment, so as a fan of roguelite, I'm down to check this out. An intriguing looking puzzle platformer is Bold Splitter, one that has you shifting dimensions through the use of controlling partitions or divisions on screen. It has a cute look, where the alien creatures in particular look adorable, but not much more has been revealed otherwise with regards to the story, but it's one for fans of the genre. I enjoy Tactics titles, so Katya's Abyss Tactics got my attention, combining procedurally generated levels and a core objective of mining for resources rather than destroying our enemies which makes it a different take. Of course, I do like the pixel art used, where there is variety in both units that you can build as well as the bug-like enemies, so it should be a neat, smaller title. Just covered SG-19 Learns to Love in my video on upcoming Metroidvania games being a simple looking mini Metroidvania title from the developer of SpookyGhosts.com. Play as a killer robot who learns to love, but somehow that still involves defeating bosses and enemies, but given the developer's previous work, I'm confident this will be good. We took care of the world because no one else would. We thought we could keep everything safe, protect everything that mattered. And we were wrong. So we isolated ourselves from Shadra, the land we were supposed to protect. We are the caretakers made my best of the month list, where this turn-based tactics title with an environmentalist theme releases very aptly on Earth Day 2021. Neither of them gave a damn about the beings that power our way of life. Trespassers are the same. Murdering, living creatures for a tiny piece of horn. Play as the Caretakers, a team of protectors defending the planet and the wildlife from extraterrestrial forces. It's pretty blatant and on the nose about the theme, but might be just the wake-up call that people need on conservation efforts. We are the Caretakers. Just one bigger title this week, which is actually a port of a game from 2002. Yes, the first Shantae game, simply named Shantae, released on the Game Boy Color 19 years ago and gets a Switch version this week, so if you enjoyed the later entries but have never played the original, it's interesting to go back to take a look.
Scholar Games of the Week begins with a very interesting looking but weird local multiplayer title in Boomerang, one where boomerangs take center stage but is crossed with some of the weirdness of something like Hylix in this. I don't usually cover visual novel titles, but Crash Auto Drive has an interesting premise where a self-driving auto cab kills someone and everyone is a suspect, including the car itself. Very timely and possibly ripped from the headlines, but it's something that we might have to contend with in the future. She is coming for you. She is not deleted. She is here. She wants to be free. The EXE Rebirth of Horror is a horror platformer which is a combination that you don't see every day but gets a Steam version after launching on mobile earlier this month. I love the art style of Devil Slayer Raksasi, where it's a top-down action roguelite with a nice variety of playable characters and gets a Switch version this week. Pixel art action platformer of interest is Golden Force, getting a Steam version after launching on Switch a little while back and looks fantastic in an old school kind of way. An interesting looking platformer title is Junk, The Legend of Junichi Kato, one where you play as a pink poop-like creature and is apparently based on a Japanese YouTuber and streamer, where this title was created by a Japanese high school student but does look well made, although you can certainly see the Mario influence in this.
A smaller pixel art action platformer from last year is Moon Raider, which impressed me with the look, getting console releases this week. I mentioned the Picross S series in my video on the best Switch exclusive indie-ish games, where they're up to the 6th entry with S6, adding even more puzzles, and if you have the earlier entries, the save data can be synced to unlock even more stuff. A super pleasant looking puzzle game this week is Regrowth, one that has you using plants, animals and water to save islands from eroding and sinking by regrowing nature on them. It looks simple, chill and very pleasing and is your chill out title for the week. PlayStation fans rejoice, the awesome Brook Light platformer Skirtspringer finally comes to PS4 and Vita, so if you have not gotten this, do yourself a favour and pick this up. Do you know where you are? You are at the privately run emergency room, Saint Icaros. I will not lie to you. There is still a long way to go before you can go home. In the meantime, do as we say. The doctor wants to see you. And don't get disturbed by some of our more mentally confused cases. Oh, thank you, dear. You will feel a little sting. The ER, Patient Typhon, is one of the creepiest horror games that I have seen in a while, where patients wake up in this medical facility with a foggy memory and missing limbs and organs, being terrifying despite the art style, and is one for fans of the genre.
probably pronouncing this wrong, but Toho Kyoi Bana Antimony of Common Flowers is a fighting game based on characters from the Toho project, initially released on PC in 2017 and is somehow getting PS4 and Switch versions this week. Not even going to try to pronounce the name of this, but it's a cool looking classic adventure game that looks neat, getting a prologue demo this week. Side note for indie developers, please choose a game name that people can pronounce, if not, how else are we going to talk about your game? Finally, an interesting looking monster taming simulator is Virtual Creature, one which looks like a reworked and revamped title from an earlier legacy version, but it does seem very much like Digimon in the setup and battles. The art is head or miss, but it's a free title so check it out if interested. Let's kick off the top 5 with Hop Links, a frustration platformer title that looks like a hoot. Well, it looks fairly straightforward, where the 4 face buttons on the controller controls the legs that come out of the cube, there are some tricky, perhaps more puzzle platformer style factors that affects the physics and more. While this subgenre has exploded in popularity due to getting over it and streaming culture, this title does look to be a new take on the space and I do love to see the innovation. Very excited to share that the city building management title, Buildings Have Feelings 2, finally makes it to launch and it certainly has been a long time coming where it did showcase this back in April 2019. It's a city building and management title where the twist is that the buildings are alive and have limbs, making it another clever spin on the classic genre. <laughs> Evil has returned, and our champions must answer the call. What's this? Super happy to share that the pixel art arcade action title Battle X makes it to launch, once again featuring the awesome pixel art of one Hank Niebog, with some classic looking gameplay that looks very smooth. To aid you in your quest, as you power up your might along the way, rescuing anyone helplessly caught in the sorceress's chaos. Darkness draws ever closer in the war against evil and sorcery. Will you show courage and fight? Will you fall? <laughs> Battle Axe! The release of Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion was a nice surprise as well, since it got confirmed a couple of days ago 
and looks like a whimsical action-adventure title that is not to be missed. After being evicted from your house due to failing to pay your taxes, play as an adorable but mayhem-causing turnip on an epic quest for money, while hopefully covering your paper trail along the way. It's irreverent and adorable, making it my kind of game. Snorter featured front and center in my video on the best upcoming indie games of the month, and here we are with the release. It's an action platformer crossed with a strategy game where you alternate between the two, of course drawing comparisons to the SNES classic Act Razor. The story is loosely based on Adam and Eve, where you play as the latter, searching for her partner, but the biblical overtones do seem to be rather muted and it's not one of those games. The pixel art, however, is top-notch and I'm definitely keen to check it out, where there are over 40 upgrades that add to the variety of the platforming combat. For the sake of brevity, I did cut the trailer a little bit short, but the hand-drawn animation is fantastic and is worth watching multiple times, so for the care that has gone into this, it should turn out well, taking the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.